This is KGW News at 11. They had plaid blocked off. They had uh, the donut shop, the, the um, car wash, my street, that little parking lot right there. Portland police cracked down on weekend street takeovers across the city. This scene off Northeast 102nd in Gleason early this morning. PPB has yet to release the final stats, but say officers seized multiple cars and guns and arrested several people. Our Alma McCarty spoke with one neighbor caught in the middle. On a sunny Sunday afternoon in Northeast Portland, Ronald Davis can be found out in the driveway. I'm infatuated with cars. I work on cars and that's what I've always done. A passion going back years. I'm a hands-on person and I've learned, I first motor I rebuilt, I was 14 years old. But this car enthusiast says he wasn't the least bit interested in joining in an illegal street takeover one block away on Northeast 102nd and Gleason. Neighbors say the large crowd began gathering just before midnight Saturday. And it was around that time Davis decided to fuel up. Came back, the street racers had my road blocked and one of the guys had cursed at me and said he would shoot at me if, and threaten me with a gun. Officers cracked down on this and other takeover events this weekend. On Friday, Portland police say at least one person was arrested and a dozen vehicles towed following a takeover on Swan Island. The pit. During the next night's mission, North Precinct officers threw spike strips into the road, seizing cars and guns, and making several arrests relating to street takeovers, speed racing, and reckless driving. Davis, trying to get back home, says he got swept up in the chaos. Well, I got scared and took off while well, my car burned out a little bit. And then I got down to like 116th and uh, Gleason. And then all of a sudden I, my tires are popped and they're throwing spike strips out at me. He's now facing a reckless driving charge, singled out, he believes, due to the kind of car. It's a 2017 Challenger RT Scat Pack. I understand what's going on, but you shouldn't judge people because of that. I mean, my car, I wasn't doing nothing. You didn't see me out there burning out like that. And I get my car towed, impounded, now it's like 700 bucks and I got a big fat ticket. While he's all for taking down takeovers and getting dangerous drivers off the road, he hopes investigators will consider the bystanders in the wrong place at the wrong time. So you ain't allowed to have a nice car and and enjoy your life with a, with what you want and because you drive a car, so I'm supposed to drive a, a grandma car, I guess. <laughs> We've reached out to PPB to get the specifics on Davis's case. We are still waiting to hear back. Police haven't yet released information on other areas. Takeovers occurred Saturday night into Sunday morning because of ongoing investigations. But officers did tell us these events involved hundreds of people. John. All right, Alma, thank you. Well, on top of stopping these street takeovers, multiple agencies patrolled Portland Saturday night as part of a stolen vehicle operation. While they're still collecting all of the data, at least six people were arrested, eight stolen vehicles were recovered, and at least three firearms were seized. Vancouver police conducted their own stolen vehicle operation on Saturday night. They recovered three vehicles and arrested several people on charges of theft, forgery, and organized retail theft, among others. One driver tried to get away from Portland officers into Vancouver, then back into Oregon until police spiked their tires. Well, another beautiful day across the Portland area on this Sunday. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri is joining us now, and the nice weather seems like it's going to be going on hiatus for a few days before coming back later in the week. For about two days, it goes on hiatus. <laughs> We're taking a little, it's going to take a little break. We're going to be seeing some, a little bit of some increasing clouds uh, heading into Monday, mainly dry really across the board, the coast, the valley, and the mountains. If you see anything, it's going to be very light. So mainly dry to start tomorrow, cool and cloudy Tuesday, but again, uh, another week disturbance moves on shore late Monday night into Tuesday, bringing in a, a few spotty showers for your Tuesday morning commute, mainly dry pretty much between now and the end of next week And We're going to be seeing a bit of a warm up as well. But again, earlier tonight, we saw some uh, pretty strong showers and some thunderstorm activity during our five o'clock show. John, you might remember uh, basically from uh, 
the, the mountains all the way into the eastern side of the state along the Oregon Idaho border was nothing but thunderstorms and lightning strikes and heavy downpours. Now we're looking at some very calm conditions out there on the radar. Here's a live look over in downtown Portland uh, from our Pioneer Courthouse square camera temperature of 50 degrees relatively comfortable out there and as we go into tomorrow you can kind of see those thick clouds all the way into your morning commute temperatures will be in the mid to the upper 40s so very uh, comfortable I'd say for your start of your work week light jacket kind of weather heading into the afternoon we'll start to see some of these clouds break up a little bit and then we'll gradually see our temperatures warm up as well I'll break that all down for you coming up in just a few minutes all right Joe thank you Portland city leaders will hold one more public listening session over the budget tomorrow. The mayor has made it clear cuts will be necessary. Among the top concerns is the gun violence that continues to impact the city. During the second session yesterday, many advocates came out to say the city needs to spend more money on groups that support the black and brown community. The mayor declared gun violence as a crisis um, in 2019. And it's still a crisis currently, no matter how much the rates drop, uh, we are still losing people that we know in real time, in current time. Tomorrow's listening session will be held in person and virtually. The mayor will release proposed budget decisions on May 3rd. This comes amid a new warning in Portland's drug crisis, a flesh eating drug called Trank appears to be showing up more across the Pacific Northwest. It's even causing some drug users to reconsider the risks. It's in the uh, fentanyl, right? I guess um, the trank is used for animals. Obviously, the tranquilizer somehow, some way it got into the fentanyl, the opiate. Trank is an animal tranquilizer called xylaxine. Multnomah County Health Department data shows one person died from an overdose involving trank and fentanyl in 2022. Five people died last year. There were no confirmed deaths involving trank so far this year. The Multnomah County Health Department says they're watching this drug closely. The company that owned a Portland nursing home has settled with 13 people who lost a loved one during the largest COVID-19 outbreak in the state back in 2020. Healthcare at Foster Creek lost 30 residents. Nearly 120 got infected before the state shut the facility down in May of that year. An attorney for the family says the care home was chronically understaffed and did not have proper infection protocols. The details of the settlement are confidential, so it's unclear how much money will go to those families. The Cowlitz County Sheriff's Office is honoring one of its fallen deputies. Deputy Sheriff Justin DeRozier was shot and killed five years ago after responding to reports of a disabled motor home. Two people were arrested. A third was shot and killed by police. On Friday, the Sheriff's Office held a memorial for Deputy DeRozier to dedicate a highway in his name. A pizza restaurant in downtown Portland is celebrating 50 years in business. Old Town Pizza opened in 1974. Current owner Adam Milne first ate at the restaurant over 40 years ago when he was just nine years old. He bought the restaurant 22 years ago. To celebrate the occasion, you can get a large house special pizza for $19.74. The owner had this to say about the restaurant's legacy in the Rose City. I, I don't really think that anyone owns Old Town Pizza. You're a steward of uh, this place. You know, a lot of people call it an institution. I think there are very few um, landmark restaurants left in Portland, and we're just honored to be one of them. Milne also wants to use the anniversary to give back to the community. One dollar from every Believe in Portland beer that is sold will be donated to Word is Bond, a black-led nonprofit leadership incubator for young men in Portland. First, I thought it was a bear. And, uh, you know, it took me a minute to process <laughs> what I was looking at. And then I fumbled around to get my phone because I thought nobody's going to believe me. A rare sighting from east of Corvallis, Crystal Perry captured a wolverine she says was trying to get into her yard. Perry lives near the Lebanon area. She says when it couldn't get through, it turned around and left. As she mentioned, she wasn't even sure what she was looking at until she remembered previous coverage of sightings. I had seen the clip of the one on the coast, which is uh, 
what stuck out in my mind when I finally dawned on me what it was is I had remembered that video that was taken on the coast and I thought, man, that looks just like it. State wildlife officials have said in the past, enjoy these rare moments when you can, but always keep a safe distance from wild animals.